Canada is committing another close to $40 million in weapons and aid to Ukraine as that country is preparing for a major spring counteroffensive against Russian occupying forces. This includes about $35 million in cash that'll help Ukraine to buy things like fuel and first aid kits. But there'll also be about $4 million, give or take, to buy more sniper rifles and ammunition, plus new radio sets for that handful of Leopard 2 tanks that Canada recently donated to Ukraine. Lots going on on the Ukrainian front. Let's bring in retired Major General David Fraser, CTV military analyst. Good to see you, General Fraser. Thanks for your time. Todd, good to be with you. Okay, so let me ask you about this Canadian aid and uh, just a sign of what's happening here uh, and what Ukraine needs right now. Your, your takeaway. Well, it's, it's good news, but at the same time, it seems to be somewhat paltry that uh, $39 million, given with what Ukraine has to do this year, uh, they're going to need, probably put a zero up behind that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they actually need in the way of material to support the offense uh, that has to happen this year for them to expel the Russians out. I mean, they've got to do it this year for Ukraine to win. We know that there's a major meeting going on at the Ramstein base in Germany. They do this every month, give or take. Uh, you know, NATO defense ministers, allies coming together to discuss what needs to be done. We're hearing a couple of developments out of Ramstein today, General Fraser. Number one, that Russia is suffering low morale. It's expending significant manpower uh, in and around that uh, city of Bakhmud and not getting a whole heck of a lot out of that now. What is, what's that a sign of here? Well, the Russians haven't been able to articulate to their own troops why they've gone into Ukraine, whereas where the Ukrainians, it's easy what they're doing. They're fighting for their homeland. So the Ukrainians have got a morale capability that the Russians just don't have. And, and but at the same time, you know, we have to remember that the Russians don't look at people the way you and I do. They will continue to put more and more troops into this sausage machine until such time as they achieve what they're looking for. So. It's sad if you're a Russian troop, but at the same time, the Russian senior leadership just don't really care about that. General Fraser, there's also word coming in that South Korea is considering direct weapons, uh, supplies, ammunition to Ukraine. We know South Korea has got huge stockpiles uh, and their president is going to be coming to Washington next week. Uh, what do you think that means if the South Koreans were to be more overt and say, yeah, you know what, we're going to start transferring particularly shells to the Ukrainians? Great news for the Ukrainians. It is a political change for Korea because South Korea, uh, you know, I, you know, cannot give direct aid to other countries that are in war. Uh, so they've been giving funneling uh, munitions and things like that through other countries like uh, uh, Poland and whatnot. So I think it's great. They have a huge stockpile to pr protect them against uh, North Korea. So now they're going to use that stockpile, give it to the Ukrainians who are actually in combat with the Russians. Uh, you couldn't have come at a better time for Ukraine and good news and well done by uh, South Korea. One last question, General Fraser, and I do appreciate that you are not privy to Ukrainian battle plans, but we've been hearing about this spring counteroffensive for a while. Any sense as to when that might happen? And also just, you know, sort of bigger picture, the idea that it's being, you know, kind of telegraphed in public here way in advance. And, and what do you think the strategy is about that? Well, I think the strategy is that, you know, the offense is coming. The fact that we haven't seen it already is indicative of, of two simple things right off the bat. They don't have enough uh, material, including ammunition, what we just talked about, to sustain the operations. And secondly, and probably most importantly, the training necessary to use that Western equipment at the level necessary to expel the Russians is not yet finished. Tr you know, equipment is hard. Training uh, soldiers on equipment is even harder. And I think what the Ukrainians have just found out is they don't have enough of both. So they're just going to slow this down because once they start this offense, you can't turn it around. You can't stop it. It's going to be for all the marbles. And, uh, you know, the Russians are just going to be waiting and just digging in longer. So uh, not surprised, uh, but indicative of just how hard this is, this is for the Ukrainians. Thanks for this, General Fraser. Always a pleasure. Todd, thank you.